What's up guys? Madness here. Uh, today I want to be going over the smithing skill uh, for all new players who don't really understand how smithing works and how to smith efficiently to get to high smithing levels. Uh, currently I am level 80 smithing and I'm going to be showing you how I got to that level in a pretty efficient way so it clears up any sort of questions you guys might have about the smithing skill in general. Now to start you're going to need a hammer and to get one you're going to go to the vendor at spawn and you're going to scroll until you come across this right here and purchase it for one coin. But I'm not going to purchase it. I have one in my bank that I'll use. But we don't even need that right now. Right now we're going to be focusing on getting to level 10 by smelting and forging bronze bars. Now to forge bronze bars you're going to need both copper and tin ore and they're going to grant you about 3 XP per bar and 5 per forge. So this is how I set up my bank when I do copper and tin. I do half copper and I do half tin. And all you're going to do is you're going to run right next door to this building right here from your bank and you're going to write over to the smelting pot right here. It's going to show up as a symbol just like that and you're going to hit enter and here's the inventory or the uh, interface for all the different bars that you can smelt and I just click a bunch because you're never going to smith that many of those. I think I'm going to be smithing uh, maybe 10, 15 of them right now. You can always check to see what's going on by opening up your inventory and watching the bars get made. So yeah, I've already made nine bars. So nine bars is what's going to net you each time you go to smelt uh, bronze bars. And you're just going to be going back and forth, smelting these just like this. Half copper, half tin, until you get a decent amount of bronze bars to start forging them with your hammer at the anvil. That's the other half to smithing, which is actually the better part of smithing, if you ask me, because that's where all the XP starts coming into play for gaining levels. Uh, see, 3 XP per bar smith, and now I will show you how to make certain things with the bronze bars. Now all in all, while I do this, I'm going to get out my hammer. It's all the way at the bottom usually. I'm going to get out the rest of these bronze bars. And I'm going to head back over to the anvil. I'm going to show you how that looks in a second. Right there. And now this will give you what level is required for each item that you want to forge. Well, currently my level is 80, so I can forge all of them. But, you know, it goes up to level 8 and then the next set of iron bars that I'll discuss next will be in effect. But right now I forge as many swords as I can because usually swords are a better money making method at these little levels to sell to the vendor. Um, so that's why I do swords instead of anything else. But you know, if you're super low level, just do whatever you can um, as much as you can to get to swords or better. Um, all in all, for getting to level 10, you're going to need about 100 bars smelted and forged, which equates to about 200 copper ore and 200 tin ore just to get to level 10. So, we'll be taking a look at iron ore right now. I'm not even going to clip it. I'm just going to get straight into iron ore. This is iron ore right here. I'm going to fill up my inventory with iron ore. And iron ore... You need three ore to make one iron bar. And it's the same steps over and over again, okay? You're gonna click on the iron bar image right here, and then you're just gonna up it to, you know, a high generic number really quick. I just do 50, because it's quick to click on and wait for your guy to make all the, bron or all the iron bars that he can with how many iron ore you had in your inventory. And see, just like that, it did it automatically. I come back this way, and I bank them. 
And I'll do this over and over again to get my smithing level as high as I can. So I'll do this one more time and then I'll show you the forging side for iron ore and then we'll move on to the next one. Now to get to level 20, which is your aim with iron ore and iron bars, you're going to need around 153 iron bars, iron, <laughs> iron bars smithed and forged. So just know that. So 153 bars or 459 iron ore. All right. See, it goes by pretty fast. I think with the pet, it goes by faster. I don't have the amber pet yet. It would be kind of cool to get it while making this video guide, but hey, either way is fine with me right now. Just getting the information out is all I really care about for you guys. So here we go back. I picked up my hammer again, and I'm ready to forge the bars into more swords. And each bar, it doesn't matter what you choose experience-wise, it's all money-based because every bar for iron or steel or whatever is going to net you 14 XP per bar. It's always the same amount of experience per bar when you forge. It just takes different amounts of bars to make different things. So I just sell them, make some money. I put my hammer back and move on to the next part. So you hit level 20, you, you smithed and forged your 153 bars, and now you're on to smithing steel bars. Now the only difference between iron and steel, you're still using iron ore. This time though, you're gonna incorporate coal into your forging and smithing. So for this, I fill up my bank just like my, my inventory, just like this and then fill it up the rest of the way with coal. A two to one ratio with iron and coal is the most efficient, obviously. It's the only way you can really get it done uh, efficiently to make the most bars for steel. Okay, and you're gonna be doing steel bars to level 30. And again, it does it automatically when you run up to the smith. Okay, it's 14 XP to smelt each steel bar and to forge each steel bar, it's gonna give you about 20 per bar, okay? Now I'm gonna do this again, because I'm gonna do this twice for each one of these for you guys, and uh, just like so. Bank and repeat. And another no a little note for you guys, if you guys are having trouble <clears throat> manipulating your bank or your inventory or stuff like that, clicking the bottom this, like the bottom here, like I'll show you. If I wanted to remove all these, click the bottom one and you just click and repeat over and over again instead of going to each individual one and clicking them into your bank. I don't know how well known that little tip is, but now you know. So back again, if you did what I did and just click more than your regular inventory's worth, just remove one and add it in just like that. So you got your two to one ratio, click steel bar, and then click a generic high number to let the game make your bars for you. Now, to get to level 30, you're going to need to forge around 384 bars. Smelt and forge them, that is. And that's gonna require about 768 iron ore and 384 coal. So, I made my two inventories. I have enough steel bars to make a few things to the anvil with the forging. And I will do that right now just to get, give you guys a little bit more visual on what I'd be doing. And this is it, man. This is smithing. It's not hard. It's very, very simple. It's just, it's just kind of confusing at first before you get used to it. I always make swords because swords seem to sell pretty well and they, they don't waste too many bars in my opinion. Like plate bodies I don't usually use unless I need to make one for somebody because it's just just too many bars, man. It's just annoying and they don't really make that much over swords. So that's why I make swords. Okay, so now that you've hit 30, you're gonna be moving on to crim steel bars. And I did crim steel bars from levels 30 to 50. 
I skipped gold and silver completely, and I'll touch on gold and silver at the end, and I'll make a timestamp for those if you guys are really interested in how uh, gold and silversmithing works. But uh, yeah, I just I stuck to crim steel and coal because the the locations to mine were much easier, and your inventory is much easier and more efficient to handle and make bars, in my opinion. It is a two to two ratio this time instead of the uh, the steel. So it'll tell you right here each time anyway, it's a two to two. And that's why I set up my inventory like that. Um, just to make it a lot easier. Uh, it's 25 XP per crim steel bar when you smelt them and you'll gain 130 XP whenever you go to forge an item out of crim steel per bar. Um, so again, like so, we just keep running. But it's it's a back and forth race to the bank, really. If you guys have played any other games where there's a, a high level cap for smithing and things like that, you'll understand that it, it's just a click intensive skill usually, and it's it, it's it's kind of a time dump. You're just doing this over and over again until you run out of materials, and then back you go again to mining or whatever it was you were doing. This, this is something I like to do in between tasks and other things, when I've kind of burned out my tasks and I've been killing the same monsters. It's a nice change of pace to go mine and smith in the hopes of getting, you know, smithing pets, mining pets, higher levels, things of that nature. Okay. So now that we've smithed our two inventories worth of crim steel, we're gonna make some crim steel items. We're gonna forge them, and I'll show you that it is 130 XP per bar. So five, let me just make a bunch of them. 650 divided by five is 130. So there you go. And I always make the swords for, it's just my preference. You guys feel free to make whatever you want with your bars. Uh, sell those. drop off the hammer and I drop whatever crimp steel bars are left. Um, if I didn't touch on this before because it's kind of late and I forgot, but you will need 1675 bars smith and forged to get to level 50. Now that's 3,350 3, crim ore and the same goes for coal. So you'll be mining a lot for this one, but I assure you it's more such such a pain in the butt to do gold, it's not even funny. I'll touch on that at the end of the video and I'll, I'll make an actual gold bar just to show you how much of a pain it is for a lazy player like myself. <laughs> um, and I'll also touch on silver uh, ore and bars as well because there's no current use for them. I don't feel a need to show you guys how to make them, but I will touch on that. Um, okay, so now you're at level 50 and you've unlocked myth and smithing, you're going to want to set your inventories up like this because the cost in ore to make myth and bars is 10 myth and ore to 5 coal. So you're going to do an inventory just like this because this is the most you'll get out of your inventories. It should be 20 myth and ore and 10 coal. And you can't fit any more so you can actually start bringing your ember pets and stuff like that if you have them. Um, yeah. So here we go. We're gonna make two or a shot, which kind of sucks, but it is what it is, man. It costs a lot to make these mythen, mythen bars, but they are very lucrative to make, actually, in terms of experience. So I'm gonna show you one more inventory, just so that you have it down how I set up my inventories and how I advise you to do so as well. 20 myth and ore, 10 coal, right over here. And you just gotta click that once because you're only making two. Oops, that's copper, there we go. Just like that. You got your two bars. Head over to your bank and I will show you exactly how to start forging with mythin. It's the same as everything else. You just get out your mythin bars and you get out your hammer. Hammer always, for whatever reason, when you sort your bank, always goes to the bottom. So it makes it easy for me to find it because I always know it goes to the bottom. Um, and for this one, we'll make a regular myth and sword. And I don't think we have enough bars to make two, so I'll just make one. 
Now you see how much experience I got right there? The experience to smelt Mythen bars is 100 per bar, but to forge is 5,000 per bar. So very, it, it starts getting very fast once you hit Mythen and beyond. Um, it takes about 168 bars smithed and forged to get to level 60. And that equates out to about 1,680 myth and ore and 840 coal. Okay, so now you've made it to level 60 smithing and you can make cobalt bars. Now to make cobalt bars, you will need eight cobalt ore and five coal. Um, so this is how I set up my inventory. It's again, you're gonna be making two bars per inventory um, and you're gonna set it up just like so. coal and you're gonna head over to the smith again and you're gonna smith your two bars unfortunately you can't make any more bars obviously because we just don't have enough inventory space to make more but this is how it's gonna go you're gonna get 200 XP per cobalt bar and to forge cobalt you're going to get 15,000 which is awesome but it is a long process to get this done and you're going to need some patience to uh, to get to those really high smithing levels. So just keep doing this. You will get there. You will get to 70. Uh, quick note, if you are a high level in combat and you've acquired some golem gear, I believe it's level 65 you want to shoot for to make golem items. And later on in the tutorial, I will show you exactly how to get to the golem and umbra smithing areas, the, the special boss smithing areas. Um, but for now, we'll just keep on going down the road here uh, until you get to higher levels of smithing. And let's find my cobalt bars and see if we can make something with eight cobalt bars and our hammer. Always bring your hammer when you're doing it. It's annoying and frustrating if you forget. So every time you're making stuff with the bars, just bring a freaking bring your hammer because I've done that so many times and it does get annoying after a while uh, so I guess right now all we can make is cobalt boots which is fine I just want to show you guys that it gets far more expensive as far as bars are concerned the higher up you go making this kind of stuff and when you're at cobalt you really want to start making sets because the sets actually sell and you can sell to other players these sets um, for a lot more money than you can vendor them. Um, currently, I don't know, I didn't do Cobalt, I actually did vendor my Cobalt stuff, uh, but I do sell Varric sets. And the Varric sets that I sell right now, I currently sell them with the swords for around 800k per set, just to show you guys that stuff. And uh, that's just one lucrative way you guys can start making extra money once you get to this smithing level and beyond is selling sets does add up over time. You can make a decent amount of money selling sets. Uh, you just have to have the patience to sell to people. Um, a little, uh, some more information about cobalt bars. You will need 222 cobalt bars to get to 70, which is about 1776 cobalt ore and 1110 coal. And that will get you to 70, which we'll be discussing right now when I go into Varex bars. Okay, so congratulations, you're now level 70 smithing, and you have earned the right to make Varaxite bars. Um, this is how I set up my inventory for Varaxite bars. I do four rows of Varaxite and two rows of Cobalt because you will need six Varaxium ore and three Cobalt ore to make one bar. So it's the same thing as everything else, man. Smithing is a very, very simple thing to do. It's always usually the same. It's just how you set up your inventories changes, depending on what kind of bars you are smithing. It makes four per inventory, and I'll just keep doing this back and forth once or twice more to show you how much experience you get for forging, which is actually really awesome. Um, this is what's gonna skyrocket your smithing levels later on. I actually outpace mining with my smithing. 
uh, in terms of leveling. So I usually have to mine a lot more than Smith because smithing is that fast in terms of XP. It's 350 XP per bar to, uh, to smith each bar and uh, 20,000 XP per bar to forge with Varaxite bars, which is freaking awesome. And again, like I said before, I make Varax sets and I sell them, so that's a good money maker as well on top of that. But for now, those were my two inventories to show you guys how I set up my inventories, and let's see if I can actually make an item with this amount of Varaxite bars. Don't forget your hammer, as always, and then head right on over to the anvil. Let's take a look here. It costs seven for that. Whoa. 16 for that. I don't feel like using wood right now. But let's make a Varaxite plate legs. 220,000 experience in one shot, making one thing of Varaxite plate legs. Okay. Now, to get to level 115 in smithing, you're gonna need 111,254 bars smithed and forged in Varaxite bars. That's what you will need to max your level from 70 to 115. I'm not really going to shoot out the numbers in terms of how much ore you'll need because at that point you'll be masters of smithing anyway and you'll under have an understanding of how many you need to get in order to max it out. Um, but some other interesting things that I do want to touch on before I end the video. Um, starting from spawn. To get to the location for forging the special boss gear, you will need to head up to uh, the Varax portal, which is this way. I'll show you how to get there from here. It's northeast from spawn. You follow this path here up this road into this portal you'll need to be level 65 to get in and from here you're going to take this path here just like this and head down past this stuff here until you get to this little house right here and these two Varaxis citizens now there's this cool looking anvil right here and this is where you go to forge all those sweet end game boss items like the, the umbral set and the golem set um, for every piece of umbral and golem gear that you forge you will gain 40,000 xp but i think when you're going to be forging these items the xp is not really what you're paying attention to because this is this is the best gear in the game right here and it does give you information as to what you will need to forge each piece of gear which obviously the dragon eye is a, is a key component to most of these as well as the golem eye and then everything else. So it's right here in Varaxis. Follow the route I showed you and yeah, get those freaking items, man. These items are freaking sweet looking in my opinion. They're, they're, real, they're really awesome to forge. They're really exciting. Okay, one other thing that I wanted to touch on that uh, won't really net you much in the realm of smithing XP. I don't think I actually does, but it does count in the smithing field, you know, the smithing realm, um, is the Torment of Glacky. Just for some extra info for you guys, when you guys see somebody make a Torment of Glacky, this is where they have to go to forge it. And starting from spawn, you're going to go this way, and you're, you're going to head east to the frozen tunnels. And the reason I'm showing you this is just for newer players to have an understanding of this is where you'd have to go if you did end up with the frozen skull and the right and left icy halves of the ring itself. Um, just, just some extra intro, that's all. But you'd enter just right here and right when you enter, you go into your inventory, right now I only have this because I already made, you know, Torment of Black a while ago. You take your pieces, you click and you just hit craft inside this place. And it would automatically assemble your Torment of Black inside the frozen tunnels. You don't have to go to any place special, there's no special anvil you walk to in the frozen tunnels, nothing like that. Um, 
So yeah, that's a little extra piece of info for you uh, that does have some uh, relevance to the smithing skill. Um, now the only thing that I would like to touch on other than showing you guys how to actually make a gold bar is uh, bar boxes and ore boxes. Uh, they're very useful ways to sell your ore and bars um, because obviously you're not going to be able to sell high numbers of ore and or bars uh, using the inventories that you have set up here. So to do that, you're going to head right above the chest here into this building. And this building has these right here, these little box symbols with the ore representations on them. So like say I want to, you know, box up my cobalt bars. Well, I just boxed it up. I only had one in my invent in my bank, but you'd go right here and you'd box it up. Uh, as many as you want. So if like a better example, let's say I, I wanted to box up all the Veraxium ore that I've uh, mined. I just hit box over and over again until I filled up that box with my ore. And there you go, all my ore is in a box right here. Easy and ready to sell to another player without taking up your inventory slots that way. Um, I think the other one is for wood cutting. Yeah, a wood cutting box right here. And uh, that's just some extra useful information for you in case you do inside you, you do decide to sell your your bars or ores instead of crafting and smithing them. Um, you know, you can do that too if you really need money. I don't advise you do that. I advise you to smith everything you have to get to the highest level possible as fast as you can. And I would say. Um, stop at level 75 to 85. I'm going to stop personally around 85, maybe even 90 in case they do eventually come out with new stuff. Um, but you really only need to hit 75 to craft all the pieces of Raxite and all the pieces of Golem and Umbral Pier. I think it's level 70 for those uh, boss items. Um, other things to note about smithing, uh, there is the ember pet, which I don't know if you guys can see the ember pet, somebody else has them right down here. The ember pet actually helps you smith faster, I believe, for every, for every 10 levels or something like that, you will gain faster smithing, I think. I, I'm not entirely sure, I don't have the pet and there is not a lot of information out there. And I did hear that they were having issues with how those pets worked, him and Woody. Um, so there's that. And also, I'd like to also touch on Infernal Rings. Now Infernal Rings are dropped by the Giant Hornets, which is southwest of here, uh, right past the Raptors to the south. Um, they give you five more, five percent more smithing XP while worn, and they have 150 uses after which it crumbles. Um, I would really advise you guys to use these, especially in the long hauls, like the 30 to 50, and anything past, um, I'd say, really cobalt. Mithin's not so bad because of the the you know the, the high amount of XP you get per forge. But definitely start using these after you hit cobalt or better and they are a really great way to gain more efficient experience with smithing um, okay as promised i will show you just how long it takes to make a gold bar uh, i currently have enough gold ore to do so and again it's the same as everything else it just for me I really don't enjoy gold ore. It's such a pain in the butt, I swear. It, it just takes such a long time because of the requirements uh, to smelt. Now you'll be making two of those. You need six, I don't even know, let me double check. So you need 16 ore to make one gold nugget and you will require 20 gold nuggets to make one gold bar. And it's just the, a long, crappy process to make gold bars but if you're really if you're really hell-bent to to be making these things then hey man my hat's off to you I mean I, I do I do personally like the look of 
uh, gold gear. I mean, it is a cool kind of set for, for that swagger look, you know, for the higher level guys to just show off because they are expensive. They're not cheap sets whatsoever because of the high cost of these gold ore, gold bars, etc. So, but yeah, we'll be doing this over and over again just to show you how long it takes me to make one gold bar. Now, to get from 40 to 50 doing gold, you will need to make 10 bars total which equates to about 3,200 ore. So just be warned, it will take you that many ore to make 10 bars. And I really still advise you to use uh, the crimp steel method that I showed you. It's just easier and uh, such, a, such, such a more seamless process in, in terms of, um, you know, it, it's, so, it's so less click intensive. That's, that's what I'm trying to get at here. And I'm sorry if I'm not coming up with good ways to explain it. I just really hate gold ore. That's, <laughs> that's, um, that's my personal preference. But uh, to each his own. Uh, this is going to take a little while, obviously. So I might actually speed this up or just, you know, cut out the voice and put some music in instead. I think I might actually speed this up. This, this would be probably a good time to learn how to do speeding up in videos because it's annoying and I don't like old ore. So I'm not going to say a whole lot about this stuff other than the fact that it sucks. But if you're looking for that swagger gear again, you know, more power to you bro, but there's far better gear to look more, more cool in, like Golem and Umbra anyway, so I don't know why people even bother with this stuff. I can see how in the future it could have some use if we're going to be using them for uh, amulets or, or rings and things like that. Once, once, uh, oh, nuggets, derp. Once we get some more uh, stuff added to the game. Again, the game's still pretty new, so. Until then, gold ore just isn't for me. It's just a long, boring process and crimp steel is far better in comparison in my opinion. Uh, where are we at? We're at 12. Cool, only two more inventories and we can forge our bar, hopefully. I think, let me see. Nope, we're gonna have to do a few more inventories. Ugh. Them's the breaks for freaking gold bars, man. I, I forged a ring of treasure a long time ago because I thought the Ring of Treasure was going to be a great benefit. I didn't have an understanding that uh, Rings of Might were really good for low-level players. I just thought, you know, the more gold I could accrue, the better. So I, you know, I broke down and I created the gold bars necessary to create the Ring of Treasure and I've regretted it ever since. So that's probably where my aggression is toward gold ore and gold bars is because it was such a bad bad purchase, a bad sale, whatever you want to call it, bad creation, because I never, I, I don't think I did sell it, I think I just gave it away to a friend in my guild um, who wanted it, so yeah, it was, <laughs> it was just a bad experience, man, what a waste of uh, gems, and hopefully the new update shows up and gems will have more uses, so. I'm really looking forward to that. I'll be covering that stuff as well. Um, all the new updates and things like that. I will be recreating my videos to accommodate those too. So if you are watching this, um, just, just know that uh, I will be adding things to it in the future. So um, you will be alerted to those things if you're a subscriber. So I do suggest you subscribe just so you get the latest updated information that I provide for these kinds of things. And uh, yeah, hopefully you're not even listening to this because I figured out a way to speed this process up until I get to the gold bar. So, <laughs> or, or not, uh, I, I might not speed it up just to, to show you my hatred for gold bars and how it, it, it drives me insane enough to not make any sense when I talk. So. Uh, there's that. Let's see. Let's see where we're at. Oh, cool. All right. Excellent. So we just hit We just had enough ore to make our gold bar, which is great um, So yeah, let's make our awesome gold bar 
Don't have any bars to work with. Oh yeah, derp. Make our awesome gold bar. Boom. I just hate the process, bro. That's, that's just where I'm at with this thing, man. But the gear, again, the gear looks freaking awesome in my opinion. It's just, to me, it's not worth it. I'd just buy it outright. I'd save up and buy it. It is expensive. It's, it's a couple mil at least for these items, but I'm looking at saving these, especially the gems, like the aerosite and the rubies in the sapphire, so. Um, like the, the, the bar price is, is crazy in my opinion. Eight, eight gold bars, that's, that's, a lot, that's a lot of gold ore mined, man. So, yeah, that's gold ore for you. Um, not fun, not my, my go-to, but that's, that's gold ore. That's how you make gold bars. Um, silver has no use yet, so I'm not gonna be going over silver at all. Uh, if you collect silver, you can make silver bars. It's kind of like an added benefit to have them in case they are useful in the future, which I'm sure they will be. Um, but for right now, uh, that's essentially how it's done. Yeah, I think that covers everything I know about smithing personally. If there's anything I left out, if there are any new updates to smithing in the future, because I know new, new stuff is coming out soon. Um, I'll be sure to include that and post new updates to my videos. Um, at this time, I'd like to give a quick shout out to my guild, the Phantom Guild, like I always do in my videos. Um, if you guys are looking to join, there was an issue with uh, some hacking problems, but they got it up and running immediately, so they've revamped the entire uh, Discord chat, and it looks freaking awesome now. So if you guys want to take a look at it and maybe even join, uh, a link will be put in the description. If you found this video helpful, please like, comment, and subscribe to it. It really helps me out. It gets me going to provide new content in the future. And I really love doing this, and I really love the feedback I've been getting. So, yeah, please do that. And uh, again, my name is Madness, and thanks for watching.